I'm Ashley Dvorkin for FoxNews.com with a new discovery by researchers at Harvard University on how to turn shrimp shells into bioplastic objects. Joining us now is Javier Fernandez, a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard's Wies Institute. Welcome, Javier. Thank you so much for being here. Um, hi, Ashley. Uh, thank and you for the interview. Thank you. All right, let's start at the top. As you're researching a fully degradable bioplastic, why did you choose to focus on this source in shrimp shells? And can you explain exactly what it's made of? So actually, we uh, didn't focus in the shrimp cells. We focus in chitin, that is one of the components of the, of the shrimp cells. So chitin is not only in the shrimp cells, it's uh, the second most abundant polymer on Earth. So basically, it's, it's everywhere. So if you think in the, in the amount of chitin that is out there, so it's like a small species of crabs in the, in the zooplankton just produce one billion tons of chitin every year. So that's like, like three, four times the, the amount of plastic that we produce every year. So w even if we get it from shrimp cells, because it's, it's a common waste from the, from the fishing industry, mm -hmm. is, is not only there. So that is uh, why we focus in, in that component. And also because this component, chitin, is, um, is always used for doing a structural biomaterial. So it's really, really a strong uh, molecule. And then the advancements of your team, how are you able to turn this into an actual 3D bioplastic object? So the, the key of this research is that uh, there are like tons of molecules out there that they are, uh, um, they are really good in terms of mechanical properties, that they can be used for technological applications. The problem is that in nature, is not everything is not about the chemistry. There is a, a very strong component about the design. So. Uh, natural materials and biological materials, they are, they are made in very specific designs, very, very smart, very complex designs. So the idea is that you have like all these components out there that we are not using, that we are basically treating as a waste, while nature is able to use them in, in really strong and, and tough uh, structures. So what we basically did was just take one of these components, in this case uh, the chitin, and then reproduce with the uh, techniques from microelectronics and nanotechnology, reproduce that uh, design at molecular scale to produce exactly the same material with the same components that uh, nature is using. So then what objects have you found it can be manufactured into and on what scale? So right now we are working in a, in a scale large for a lab, small for an industrial scale. So we are uh, manufacturing um, plastic caps, we have uh, cartons, we have some chess pieces. So basically we are trying to explore the, the limits of the, of the technology. And um, well, right now in terms of, of shapes and, and designs, we, we don't have like a very clear limit. So we have limits in the, in, in the amounts of them that we can produce. So that's the next step, the step that we are um, working now on, that is the, the pa passing from this, um, doing like a, like a few kilograms of objects to pass to do, to do tons of them. Now, how does this compare to other bioplastics, and what are the most common other bioplastics that are out there? So there are like like a lot of bioplastics these days. So it's like if you think PLA, definitely is the, is the mon most common one. So and in general, what do you do is like you take a, a biological source, a, a source of carbon, and then you made a, a material or a plastic that uh, is similar to the ones that we are using these days. And that's how all the bioplastics work. So the difference in this plastic is we don't uh, change the molecule at all. So we take a very abundant component that has been used for like as a fertilizer in cosmetics and in, in many applications, but any of them are structural. And then we take this polymer without a, this, this natural component without any change, and then we use it exactly in the same way that, as nature used. And the thing is that this kind of approach is, um, you can extrapolate it to, to many other components. It's not just specific for, for this one. And that's the difference, basically. And then talk a little bit about the fully degradable side of it, a little bit more, and how you've seen those results. I saw you, you grew a plant in three weeks with soil that was enriched with it. So tell, tell me a little bit about that. So these days, this component, this, all, all these shrimp cells, 
So our use, uh, one of the applications is as a fertilizer because they have like a, a lot of nitrogen. So the good thing when you are using a, a natural component a, a, in the same structure that, that in nature means that it's not only produced by, um, by different organisms, it's also degraded by different organisms. So you don't need anything additional. It's, it's something that nature has been um, revolving around and then like developing all the mechanisms to actually use it. So what we did with this, this component was just uh, put it in soil, start degrading and then uh, grow plants in it. And then on the other hand, because all this high content in nitrogen, so you are at the same time fertilizing the, the plant. Great. And so now what does this advancement overall, what does this mean to you and your team and, and what's next from here? So next step is to, to do the, to jump to the industrial scale. So we uh, got tons of attention from all these people that they have these leftovers from shrimp cells, from uh, growing insects. So these kind of ways with, with high contents of chitin that they are like actually looking forward to do something with them. And then we got a lot of attention too from people who manufacture things and they are looking for, for new components, new materials that they, um, that they fully degrade and they are like most most sustainable. So the work that we are doing now is actually to like uh, to fill that gap between uh, these two people. Oh, great, Javier! Thank you again so much for joining us today and for sharing these findings with us. Okay, thank you for you to you. And as always, thank you for joining us too for FoxNews.com. I'm Ashley Devorkin.